So, back when I did my Sonic Heroes story video, in the lead up to that, I was seeing a lot of comments being like, Sonic Heroes has no story, the video's gonna be 10 minutes long. And I've been seeing a lot of similar comments for Sonic Colors saying pretty much the same thing. And like, come on people, you should know me better than that at this point. These story videos are not just me listing off the plot points of what happens throughout the games. We go so much more into it than that. We talk about the writing and the themes and the story structure and why the story is the way that it is. And in those regards, there is so much to talk about the story of Sonic Colors. In fact, in many respects, I think that this is one of the most interesting Sonic stories, not necessarily from a storytelling perspective, but from a production perspective and why the story is what it is and why it is the way it is. But before we can get into all that, of course, we do have to just talk about what the story of Sonic Colors is. And uh, Sonic Colors is a big turning point for the storytelling of the Sonic series. And in a very bad way, a lot of people really do not like the story of Sonic Colors and many of the following games for good reason, absolutely. However, I do want to say here that I do not completely hate the story of Sonic Colors. <gasps> oh my goodness, Pariah, how could you do this? How could you betray us all? Look, listen, just hear me out here for a second. I'm not saying the story is good, and I'm not even saying that I like it necessarily, but what I do think is that Sonic Colors has some interesting aspects to its story that I do like, and I think that there is potential here for a really good fitting Sonic story that is unfortunately very wasted. Because here's the deal with Sonic Colors. I'm going to approach talking about this story a little bit differently than I have videos in the past. I actually just want to talk about uh, the high-level concepts and premise of what Sonic Colors is before we start digging into, you know, the actual cutscenes and the plot and everything, because I really like the premise of Sonic Colors. The idea here is that Eggman has set up his interstellar amusement park, uh, and it's totally not evil at all, it's just an amusement park for fun, and it's, uh... ...to, uh, reconcile all of Eggman's past transgressions, and I'm sure there's absolutely nothing evil going on here. But, of course, Sonic suspects that Eggman is up to no good, so he comes to the park to investigate and put a stop to whatever Eggman is up to. And that's pretty much it, as far as story setup goes, and I can appreciate the straightforward simplicity of this kind of story. Compared to so many previous Sonic games that have all this crazy shit going on and all the anime drama and all the lore and backstory and 75 hours of cutscenes, this sort of straightforward simplicity is very reminiscent of the older Sonic games, where it's like, here's what's happening, here's what Eggman is doing, Sonic goes to stop him, game begins. And that is exactly what they do here in Sonic Colors as well. In fact, this game doesn't even have an opening cutscene. You hit start, and the game just boots you right into the first level, very much like what the old-school Sonic games would do. And there's a lot about Sonic Colors that is reminiscent of the original Sonic games that I'm going to talk about throughout this video. And very quickly into playing Sonic Colors, you are introduced to these little alien dudes' wisps that are functionally power-ups that Sonic can use for different abilities and things, and they also power his boost meter in this game. But what I like about the Wisps conceptually from a storytelling perspective is that they are kind of an expansion on the idea of Eggman powering his robots with animals from the original Sonic games. You know, that's something that was completely lost as the series progressed. They just didn't even care about that whatsoever anymore. But with Sonic Colors, they bring that back. But instead of animals, it's now Wisps powering his robots. And that gives what was before just a narrative device now it has a gameplay function. Before you would destroy robots and that would free the animals and whatever. Now you destroy robots and free the wisps and that gives you new gameplay abilities. Which I think is a cool way to take something that's been around in Sonic forever and actually do something new with it. I like the wisps in that way. They are expanding on things that have already existed in the Sonic series in the past in a good way to me. And my favorite part of Sonic Colors storytelling comes from all of the environmental and background storytelling that's not explicit and in your face. It's the things you have to notice and pay attention to while you're playing the game. For example, the Wisps. You can get either White Wisps from killing enemies or you can get any other type of Wisp through breaking open these capsules and that will give you the Wisp inside that capsule. 
But these little capsules, they're like the little gachapon capsules that you get from, like, vending machines. And I love that detail. At first it's like, just whatever, but then you realize, no, that, that totally fits into the theme of what this game is. Eggman is taking all these aliens and all these different alien worlds and transforming it into an amusement park and exploiting them. And with that, he's taken the Wisps, the inhabitants of these planets, and he has turned them into little prizes you can win at the amusement park. It's so wonderful, and it harkens back to those original environmental themes of Sonic. Which is a big part of Sonic Colors, actually, that I really like. The environmental theming of Sonic is something that was lost for the series for a long time, and Unleash finally brought it back, which I appreciated, and Sonic Colors does that as well. But it does it in a much more obvious, in-your-face, and direct kind of way, like that sort of thing with the Wisps. Or when you go to Planet Wisp, this has such a beautiful design to how this zone works. Because Planet Wisp is this gorgeous natural environment with all this alien flora all over the place, and it's so nice. But you don't really get to appreciate that, because very quickly you come into this construction site area. And I remember when I first played the game, I really didn't like that, because I wanted to enjoy and appreciate the beauty of this zone more, and I never really got the opportunity to do that. But now playing Sonic Colors, I realize that's the entire point. That's what's going on here. This planet is in the process of Eggman turning it into another one of his amusement park attractions. So there's all this construction work here and all this beautiful nature that you want to appreciate. It is being ruined by Eggman's construction, so you don't get to appreciate it. It's perfect. It ties very naturally into the themes that the game is trying to present all through just the environment. No cutscenes necessary to get these kinds of things across. Even the music does a really good job of getting these ideas through, where if you listen to the music of Planet Wisp, it's this very nice, elegant piano sound, and that's meant to represent the natural beauty of the planet. But then underlying that, there's also some rock, some guitar that's going on at the same time, and it like peaks up at different points. And that is Eggman and all of his construction corrupting the beauty and the elegance of Planet Wisp. This is a level of background storytelling that they have not achieved with Sonic since probably Sonic CD, I would say, and I love it. It's so good. And you can see these same things in, like, all the zones of the game, like Starlight Carnival. You have this uh, dazzling array of lights in all these ships, and these are definitely not Eggman's battleships that he just put some lights on. No, 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 no. This is an attraction. There's nothing evil going on here. It's all good, I promise. Same goes for Aquarium Park. This is an ocean planet, and even on the level select, you can see there's some, like, weird giant meshed metal grid thing surrounding the planet. And when you go into the actual zone itself, then you have this wonderful, beautiful environment with this Japanese theming going on, and it's so nice looking. But then you pay attention, and all of the parts of it that are out of water, you can see that there's like coral reefs and stuff. Things that normally would be in water, and if you pay attention in the background, there are all these glass domes and everything. So what Eggman has done here is he's built these domes under the water to create this, you know, aquarium attraction for everybody. And he has just said, fuck you, to all of the animals that would normally be living here. The premise of this game is so well communicated just through in-game play stuff. It's really fantastic. This whole facade that Eggman is putting on that at first seems totally legit, but if you pay a little bit more attention, you can start to see the holes in it. And then by the end of the game, you get to Asteroid Coaster, the final zone, where it's, oh, it's we took this asteroid belt and made an amusement park. Please don't go to these other areas where I'm transforming all the wisps into evil energy sources for me. Don't, don't go there. Just enjoy the roller coaster. All this kind of background storytelling stuff is great, and I also love that it is getting back to the roots of what Sonic was originally about, with all those environmental themes and stuff, but now with a fun little space twist thrown onto it, which I appreciate. I think it's fun, and I really love the whole aesthetic of this game. The zones look great, the music is great, like, everything that they went for here, they totally nailed. And that's a lot of what I appreciate about the story of Sonic Colors, is that in terms of premise and what's going on here, it's so Sonic, and it's done so well. 
However, as great as all this is, Sonic Color's story has some pretty significant issues that severely harm the ability to make all this stuff work. Biggest problem of which being... Hey Tails, you missed the BBBE. Huh? Best boss beating ever! Who are these characters exactly? It's very weird, you know, it's a Sonic game, so you'd expect the Sonic characters to be in it, but oddly, there are no Sonic characters in this Sonic game. There are characters that look like Sonic, Tails, and Eggman, but they don't act like Sonic, Tails, and Eggman. They act like completely different characters, and I'm very confused. Are these supposed to be doppelgangers? Where are the real Sonic, Tails, and Eggman? I don't understand, and the game's story never really addresses it, but it's very weird. Uh, but jokes aside, yeah, we're going with English for this game's story because, for Sonic Colors, they got some new writers involved in the Sonic series. Ken Pontac and Warren Graff, uh, and it's pretty significant because these are the first English writers to write for Sonic. Every single Sonic game up to this point, the story has been written by Japanese writers, mainly members of Sonic Team. Uh, but for Colors, they decided to make a change and brought on some English writers, and that is primarily the reason that all the characters act so differently here, and why the tone is very different. Uh, because Warren and Graf, when getting hired for this job, didn't know anything about Sonic, and this is a point that a lot of fans really get stuck on, like, what the hell, why did they get the job, why on earth would Sega hire these guys that don't know anything about Sonic to write for Sonic, but that was exactly the point, and I think there's a lot of unfair hate that gets thrown at these two, when really a lot of it is not their fault. What we need to do is we need to go back to the Sonic series as it was at the time when they would have started working on Sonic Colors and deciding what direction they want to push the game into, and by extension, the future of the Sonic series. And up to this point, Sonic had not been doing very well as far as mainline 3D console games is concerned. The past several games that they've done in a row were either mixed reception to being horrible embarrassments. You know, Heroes was very mixed, Shadow made them into a laughing stock, 06 is one of the most infamously terrible games of all time. And then they made a lot of changes with Unleash to maybe try to address some of the issues of all the previous games, and still that game got very mixed reception. Plus at this time, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 were also starting to have a lot of new negative criticism being thrown their way. So I imagine at this time, Sonic Team was really thinking, okay, we gotta try something different because what we've been doing has not been working. And we can see the beginnings of that in Sonic Unleashed with a new gameplay style, less focus on having a million characters and big complicated story, not really acknowledging anything that has happened in any of the previous games. Unleashed was the beginning of this transition for Sonic. And Colors really is just a continuation of that, because even after all the changes of Unleashed, that game still got a lot of mixed reception. So I imagine Sonic Team was like, okay, we clearly didn't change enough, so let's change even more. And that's where a lot of what I said before about this game being very much like the classic games, like the original Sonic games, comes from. I think that they were going with a very back-to-basics approach to Sonic with this. Like, okay, all that stuff that we did in all the 3D games, a lot of people didn't like that, but people did like the original games. Maybe there was something to that formula, so let's try to emulate that a little bit. So, dramatically reduce focus on storytelling, hence the game just opens right onto gameplay. We're continuing what Unleashed started with having Sonic being the only playable character, because Sonic friends bad at this time. Even the gameplay as well, the fact that this is just a pure Sonic game, no alternative gameplay, no hub worlds, no weird extra stuff, it's just a Sonic platformer, very focused and straightforward and very old school, you know, you got zones, you got acts, two acts per zone if we're going with the original version of the game before they changed it. Boss fight for every zone, you even kind of have sort of special stages with game land going on. A lot about Sonic Colors seems like it's going back to, like, original Sonic stuff. Even the premise of the game, like I said, feels very old school, very simple, very straightforward. 
Eggman is not summoning some ancient evil god or anything like that in this story. And also, as I said, the return to the environmental themes from original Sonic material. All of this, to me, feels like an effort to get Sonic back to what people liked about it originally, which is a direction that I can appreciate. However, at the same time, there is a lot lost, and I do acknowledge that, but I can't really blame Sonic Team for wanting to try this, considering how badly all of their games have been received up to this point. And the choice to bring in American writers, and especially go out of their way to find writers who didn't know anything about Sonic, I think that's just part of that as well. They want to try something very different with Sonic, not just in terms of the game or the story, but also the tone. And to achieve something really different, they brought in writers from a different culture, from a different language, that are going to take things in a very different direction, and... Writers who don't know anything about Sonic are not going to be influenced by what Sonic has been up to this point. They're going to have a totally separate, unique vision for Sonic that does not have any of the baggage of all the previous games, which is exactly what Sonic Team wanted at this time, which is why they were hired for the job. And in that respect, Warren and Graf absolutely accomplished what they were hired to do. This is a very different direction for Sonic that is very distant than anything that has come before. Whether we like it or not, this is what Sonic Team wanted Sonic to be at this time, and it is not Warren and Graf's fault that they wrote the characters this way because they were told to write the characters this way. And another thing I want to say about those two is that oftentimes they get way more criticism for the stories of the games that they write than they actually should. They quote-unquote, write the stories in that they write the dialogue and the scenes, but the overall story and premise still comes from Sonic Team for pretty much all of their games. It's not like every single aspect of Color's story comes from them. It being a space amusement park, the wisps, the general theming and the premise, all of that, I will guarantee you, came from Sonic Team, and they were probably given a document of... Here's what the game is going to be about, here's the general plot of what we want you to do, write the story, and thus they wrote the story. The creative force behind what Sonic is and what direction they want the series to go into is still most certainly Sonic Team. So if there's anyone to blame for this kind of tone and direction for Sonic, it's Sonic Team themselves, because they're the ones that chose to make this kind of change. And again, I can't necessarily blame them for wanting to try a very different direction for Sonic storytelling because what they'd been doing up to this point wasn't working, clearly. Most people did not care about the Sonic stories and Sonic was kind of a laughingstock at this point. So sure, try something different. The issue with that, of course, is that for the people that do like how Sonic was being handled, you're alienating them and telling them, well, fuck whatever you like, because we're doing something else now. Hence, all of the issues that hardcore Sonic fans have with the stories of Sonic Colors and a lot of the 2010 Sonic games. Whereas if you ask a casual fan, a lot less of them have issues with this, and in fact, some of them prefer this kind of tone for Sonic over the melodramatic anime stories of the 2000s games, and I can totally understand why. Because that's not what you expect or necessarily want going into Sonic. It's a colorful, cartoony, platformer video game. You don't expect it to be taking itself ultra seriously and trying to have all these heady themes and stuff. But for Sonic fans, for me especially, I like that Sonic would try to do those things and have deeper stories with a little bit more going on. To me, that's one of the things that makes Sonic what it is. And I think the same is true for a lot of Sonic fans, which is why we have so many issues with the stories of the games throughout this era of Sonic. Another big part of that is the characterization of all the Sonic characters. People complain so much about characterization these days because the characters are written as completely different characters. They keep, like, their kind of broad surface-level personality traits, kind of, but if you look at Sonic in this game, he's cracking jokes all the time. And if you look at Sonic in the previous games, especially looking at the Japanese scripts, he's not a jokester. He's not trying to be funny constantly. He's a little bit more jokey when Shiro Maikawa writes him, but it's mostly through him being sarcastic. It's part of his attitude. But Sonic is not like a riot, laugh-a-minute kind of character. 
And so in this game, he feels out of character. But the truth is he's not out of character. Sonic is perfectly in character for this game and what they wanted him to be because this is a different Sonic and they wanted to do something different with him. For it to be out of character, they would have to be attempting to write Sonic the same way he had before and failing at that, but that's not the case here. They were actively trying to write him differently. Well, not even really because the writers don't even know what Sonic was like before. But Sonic Team actively wanted a Sonic that did not resemble the Sonic that we know. And this is once again just another continuation of what they were doing in Unleashed, where they're trying to distance themselves from previous games, and now part of that includes the characters themselves. These are basically completely different people, entirely separate from everything that's happened before. It's not a characterization issue, it's a direction issue. This is not done by mistake, this was all intentional. And I think the voice actor changes of this game is just another part of that. We're trying to distance ourselves away from Sonic, so Sonic's even gonna sound different too. They were just doing everything they could possibly do to get Sonic away from what it was before and towards something new. And this is something I really take issue with, with how Sonic Team and Sega handle Sonic, because this is not the first time the series has gone through a dramatic tone shift or a giant change in direction of what they want Sonic to be. But every time they do this, for some reason, they don't just reboot Sonic and just have a new iteration of it separate from the past. They just continue from what they already had before, despite the fact that this doesn't match at all with what existed previously. Like, people wouldn't complain that Sonic in this game doesn't act anything like Sonic if this wasn't supposed to be the same Sonic. Why do they act like this is the same character as who it was before when it's not? That's how you get into this giant, confusing, nonsensical mess that is the Sonic series that we have nowadays, which could all be avoided if when they effectively rebooted the Sonic series, they just actually rebooted the Sonic series. I would honestly prefer that to this mess that we have now, because then people wouldn't have to complain. How could Sonic from Unleashed and this Sonic be the same character? That doesn't make any sense. It's all just so stupid. But I do think it is worth putting our own feelings about these things aside for a minute and looking at the final product for what it is. Yes, this is a new direction for Sonic, and a lot of Sonic fans don't like it. But if we get past that and just look at this tone and this style of Sonic for what it is, does it actually work and is it actually good? And in my opinion... No, it is not. I said before that people are overly critical of Warren and Graf for all the bad stuff that they apparently did, even though it wasn't really their fault. But you know what is their fault? The horrible writing in Sonic Colors. Okay, we want to change the tone of Sonic, and the change they're making here is they're turning it into more of like a American kids Saturday morning cartoon type of tone. Not what I want for Sonic, I definitely disagree with this choice, but okay, if you want to do that, maybe that can work if you do it really well. But then you watch through these cutscenes of Sonic Colors, and they're terrible! The jokes here are so bad, they are so cliché, like so much of the comedy and the dialogue here. It's just the most generic, terrible, like, kids cartoon writing you've ever seen. And I know someone's gonna be like, well, it's just for kids, and that is not an excuse for making shit. SpongeBob is for kids too, but it's actually really clever and well-written, and has unique jokes unlike anything else that you only get from watching SpongeBob, and it's so good that anyone of any age can appreciate it. Whereas the writing of Sonic Colors, and pretty much all of Warren and Graf's writing, it's so bad, dude. Precious little aliens! I'll harness their hyper go on power and then nothing will stop me! I know I say that every time, but this time really nothing will stop me! <laughs> Boss? What? Sonic! Who are you calling nothing? Huh? He means since the boss said nothing will stop me and Sonic here is going to stop him, it's like the boss was calling Sonic nothing. Great! I thought nobody would get that!
Like, geez, dude, I'd be willing to give this tone shift a pass if it was at least effective at what it was trying to do, but it's terrible! There is not a single funny joke in all of Sonic Colors, in my opinion. And that is a serious issue when that's all the game is trying to do with its storytelling. Like, take the new characters, Orbot and Cubot. Orbot kind of technically being a returning character as the little thing from Sonic Unleashed, but now it's been turned into a whole thing, and these two are going to be sticking around for a while, as much as we all don't want it, because these two are just comic relief, bumbling idiot sidekicks for Eggman. And th nothing they say is funny. Nothing. Nothing they've ever done or said in any Sonic game that's ever been written by anyone has been even slightly amusing. They're just there, and nobody gives a fuck about these characters. Like, I've criticized Silver in the past for being a character that is poorly utilized and poorly written, and so I don't even really understand why people like him. But, you know, at least Silver is a Sonic character, he has an attempt at a legitimate story, he's got relatively fun-ish gameplay in Sonic 06. He could work if he was done well, but Orbot and Cubot, they're just nothing. They're just non-characters that purely exist to tell horrible jokes, and that's all they really can be. Like, I'll say fuck Silver all day, but I'll at least acknowledge him as a terrible Sonic character. But when we get to Sonic Colors and onward, this is when we start to get to Sonic characters that I just reject. I just refuse to acknowledge them as legitimate Sonic characters because they don't fit with anything else. And they're so poorly executed and so poorly conceived that they could never become anything that I would ever give a fuck about. Uh, but one thing I do want to say about Orbot and Cubot that I do find to be quite interesting is what they are. A pair of bumbling buffoons for Eggman to command around, to be comic foils, to bounce off of him. That is something that we have seen time and time again throughout American Sonic material, if we look to cartoons and comic books and things like that. You know, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog had Scratch and Grounder, Sonic Underground had whatever those characters were. Even Sonic X, which is Japanese, had uh, Deco and Boko, which in my opinion is the best of the uh, Eggman comic cronies. I think those two are pretty funny and they fit Sonic relatively well. Uh, but anyway, what I'm getting at here is that I found something interesting coming back to Sonic Colors and going through its story again. A lot of this writing to me it feels very similar to the writing of the old-school American Sonic stuff from the 90s, like the cartoons and whatnot. Like, take this line from Sonic and picture it out of Jaleel White's voice in, like, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Hey, did somebody here order a clobbering? Are you sure? It says somebody ordered an extra-large clobbering topped with everything. Hmm, okay. Tell you what, I can't take this thing back, so I'll give you an extra large clobbering for nothing. Hope you're hungry. It kind of fits that version of Sonic, doesn't it? It sounds like something that kind of 90s American Sonic would say. And a lot of general things about the writing of Sonic Colors, the fact that it is trying to be like an American cartoon, and Sonic's constant jokiness and everything, a lot of it does feel very reminiscent of those old-school American cartoons, which makes sense why they brought American cartoon writers onto Sonic. But you know what's a really interesting thing about Sonic Colors? If we go to the DS version of the game, then here we see the kinds of visual novel cutscenes from the Sonic Rush games, and the general plot is the same. However, when we go to all these scenes, the characters speak very differently here. Clearly, Warren and Graf were not involved in this version of Sonic Colors, and as a result, the characters act much more authentically to how they have in previous games. They don't make jokes, really. They're very to the point, very focused, and very consistent with how they generally have been. Even more interesting is that if we go to the Japanese version of Sonic Colors, it's really fascinating. I talked about how in Sonic Adventure and a lot of the early 3D games, they would completely change the dialogue and a lot of stuff when they would translate things to English to make it fit more with the Americanized version of Sonic. Well, for Sonic Colors, it's the opposite scenario, actually. They've changed a bunch of the American written dialogue 
to make it more fitting of the Japanese version of Sonic. And as a result, a lot of the terrible, annoying dialogue and out-of-character interactions from Sonic Colors have been fixed for the most part. Like, for example, if we look at this scene of Sonic and Tails after they've mostly won the day and they're kind of celebrating, in the English version, Sonic is like, We, I'm the one who ran around and destroyed all the robots and did everything, and then Tails is like, Oh, well, I built the translator so we could understand the robots, blah, 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 blah. And it's a very sassy, sarcastic interaction, and Sonic and Tails have never talked to each other like that ever in a previous Sonic game. However, in Japanese, this scene is completely different. Here, Sonic says that he couldn't have done it without Tails' help, and Tails is like, Yeah, I built the translator, but Sonic, you were awesome! And then Sonic's like, Hey, we both did awesome out there. And it's like, huh, they're acting like Sonic and Tails, and talking to each other like these characters talk to each other. Interesting, and it's like this all over the game. There are so many tweaks and changes to the dialogue here that tries to make the characters more authentic to their actual characters. Which is so bizarre because, like, it means that this direction shift that they wanted to do for Sonic is squarely targeted towards the Western world. They didn't want to change Japanese Sonic for the Japanese audience. What Sonic Colors, and pretty much every Sonic thing afterward, including up to this day, does to me is it seems like it's trying to un japanese Sonic for a Western audience, because throughout the 2000s, Sonic was super-duper Japanese, and they stopped trying to hide that over time in the 2000s, and by the time you get to something like Unleashed, the Japanese-to-English translation is very authentic and accurate to what's actually being said by the characters. So, that makes me think that this big tonal shift for Sonic, it's not just about, okay, let's try something different. It's just like what I was saying before, how a lot about Sonic Colors is, okay, let's go back to what was working back in Sonic's heyday, in the classic days of Sonic, including let's split American and Japanese Sonic and have two different interpretations of the series for different markets. That's what we have here, Japanese Sonic, who's more straight-faced and like he's always been, less jokey, and then American Sonic, that's all just goofy Saturday morning cartoon jokes every five seconds. It's really, really strange to me. You know, it kind of made some sense in the 90s, but nowadays with the internet, we live in an interconnected world, and so things like this can happen, where someone can look up all the changes made to different regions and stuff, and they can be upset about that fact. So, the real issue that has caused all these problems for so many years with Sonic fans not liking how Sonic has been handled, is that due to the backlash of the 2000 Sonic games, Sega or Sonic Team or whoever has determined that it is a good idea once again to go back to what they were doing originally with Sonic in the 90s and having a different Sonic for different regions of the world. And, hell, for all I know, maybe they're right about that. Maybe that is the smart decision. Maybe the general audiences of the West do prefer a jokey, cartoony, silly Sonic, but personally, I can say that I absolutely do not want that as I love the Japanese vision for Sonic, that's what I want Sonic to be. And this shit is just terrible. All it is, is generic cartoon slop. If it at least had its own vision and its own voice behind it, maybe I could be down for it. But this? This is junk. This is terrible. And I can't fathom why they would think it's a good idea for Sonic to just become some generic, mediocre cartoon series, as opposed to something that stands out and is unique, like it is in the more Japanese interpretations of what Sonic is. That said, while the Japanese version of Sonic Colors is certainly a lot better and the characters are a lot more true to their actual characters, 
it's far from perfect because the story being written in English first, there's a lot that is left unchanged. A lot of dialogue and jokes and stuff is still there and it does still feel kind of out of character. And it's even more jarring in Japanese because the cutscenes are animated to match the English script, which means a lot of what the characters are saying and what they're doing in the cutscenes don't really match at all and it doesn't make a lot of sense and it just looks weird and awkward. And in general, the cutscene animation in this game is fucking terrible. It is so bad looking. And that's actually a problem we're gonna have in pretty much every following Sonic game. Cutscenes have hit an all-time low for the Sonic series, and it's something that really needs to get addressed. I mean, cutscenes weren't even very good in a lot of the previous games, but they're especially terrible looking now. Another thing worth mentioning is there's a lot of, like, pun stuff in the script of Sonic Colors that when you go to Japanese, it just completely falls flat on English speakers because these puns don't make any sense anymore because, you know, puns and how they work and stuff. So no matter what you do, the story and cutscenes of Sonic Colors end up still being really messy and really just bad, honestly. Uh, but okay, we got through all that stuff, so now let us quickly rattle through the actual plot of Sonic Colors, and this will be very fast because there's not a whole lot here. As I said, Eggman built his uh, space amusement park and Sonic and Tails go to check it out, and uh, with the release of Sonic Colors Ultimate, they actually released like a little prologue comic book thing, just a couple of pages, that does a better job of like conveying this stuff, almost like if it had, like, a manual or something with a little prologue story, because as I said in the game, you just start and you just go into the first level and, like, what the hell is going on? But these give you a little bit more context and idea of what's going on. Eggman coming to Planet Wisp, capturing all of them, Sonic and Tails, seeing the ad for the amusement park, and then going to check it out. Uh, it's, again, it's very nice. It feels very old-school Sonic. I like it. It's weird that it was only made for the remaster of the game made, like, a decade later, but whatever. Uh, not gonna be going through a lot of the cutscenes here, honestly, because very little of substance happens throughout the story of Sonic Colors. We're just gonna quickly focus on the main things. Uh, like the opening cutscene, for example, is basically just giving you the rundown of this situation. But I do want to point out there's this really awkward part where Sonic is like, man, we had a really easy time sneaking in here. And then Tails is like, did we? And then we cut to a pre-rendered cutscene of what was originally going to be the opening cutscene of Sonic Colors before they decided they didn't want an opening cutscene. That's not confirmed or anything, but I just assume that's the case because it's very obvious that that's how it's supposed to be. Also, I think that's how it is in the DS version of Sonic Colors. Weird that they decided to not have an opening cutscene and do it in this awkward flashback, but uh, whatever. And Tails' dialogue here really makes no sense, where he's like, Did we have an easy time sneaking in? And then they show a cutscene where they had an easy time sneaking in. Clearly, this was done after the fact just to shove this in so we could show that expensive pre-rendered cutscene that we made. Weird stuff like that in this story. Anyway, we're introduced to Orbot and Cubot trying to catch some wisps. Sonic interrupts and save the wisps, and then they uh, start trying to talk with the wisps to figure out what's going on, but they can't understand what the wisps are saying. Then Tails makes a translator, because this is that version of Sonic where for some reason Tails isn't allowed to do anything, so he just sits around and does nothing the whole game. Uh, and we get a lot of stupid jokes about, like, Oh, I'm mishearing what he said, so the translation is weird, and I make really bad, lame jokes that aren't funny at all. And that goes throughout the entire game, but uh, they get the rundown of Eggman capturing Wisps, and they have their hyper-go-on energy, which is really fucking stupid sounding. And fun fact, does not exist in the Japanese version. They just call it Wisp Energy. Uh, and Sonic and Tails go smashing up Eggman's stuff, and, uh, there's this plot point here that's really fucking stupid, where after defeating the first boss, Orbot and Cubot are cleaning it up, being as unfunny as they always are. By the way, there's another terrible running joke here with Cubot, with his voice box, how it's, like, not functioning correctly, so he has, like, a cowboy accent, and then later it goes to a pirate accent, and whatever, it's fucking stupid. Uh, but yeah, they can't find this one missing part to the first boss, and then we zoom over and, oh, ominous, it's over here, it punctured into this thing, whatever. Uh, and then we go a bit further into things, and Eggman reveals his plan when he tries to shoot a beam at Sonic, but then Tails jumps in the way, and it's a mind-control beam powered by Wisp energy. 
And he's gonna use that to fire a big beam at the whole planet and take it over. And this cutscene is really fucking stupid where Tails is just like blocking Sonic and it's like, really? You can't get around him? This is just so shit. But again, doesn't this feel like something that could happen in like Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog? It really does. Uh, but Eggman runs out of juice here, so then he flies away. Basically, that whole thing was just to explain Eggman's plan here. Uh, let's see. Everyone continues to make terrible, unfunny jokes throughout the game. And then, uh, we learn that Eggman has captured all these planets with tractor beams. And the characters have to go destroy the tractor beams to release the planets so they can go back to where they belong. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the one Wisp that they're talking to throughout this whole time is named Yakker, who is a non-character and exists purely just to do exposition to explain all this stuff to our characters. Uh, Sonic and Tails find their way to, like, the factory where Eggman is extracting the Wisp energy and turning them into, like, evil purple Wisps or whatever. It's not very clear what's going on there. Uh, and then Sonic destroys all the generators and frees all the wisps, and, uh, the day is saved, and all the planets are freed, but Eggman's like, ah, but I've already got enough power to use my giant mind control beam. And so he starts to fire it, but then the robot arm from earlier, lodged in one of the cannons, causes it to blow up. Which means that everything that we've been doing up to this point is kind of pointless, like, I guess freeing the wisps and the planet is good, but... Eggman's whole threat here was solved by something that Sonic didn't even intentionally go out of his way to do, which just happened accidentally. That's fucking terrible. Oh my god. Uh, so the space station is exploding and uh, Sonic and Tails are trying to get out of there, but Eggman's like, No, fuck you, Sonic. I hate you, so I'm gonna try to kill you at the very last minute. And then there's this really forced moment where Tails is like, I don't know if we can defeat him, Sonic. And then Sonic's like looking at the elevator and he pushes Tails in. And Tails is like, no, Sonic, don't do it. And then Sonic goes to take on Eggman by himself. And like, where the fuck is this coming from? Suddenly this game is trying to have a theme about like trying to do things on your own. And nothing leading up to this point in the story had anything to do with this. What the fuck? I think... I think the setup for this is supposed to be Tails getting brainwashed earlier, and it's supposed to be a thing of, like, Sonic is worried about Tails' safety now, so he pushes him off to the side for the final battle so he can take on Eggman without having to worry about Tails. And that's to, like, set up a theme of, like, you know, you can't do things by yourself, you gotta rely on others. But it's really detached from that, and I did not connect those dots until just now analyzing the story. I can kind of see what they're maybe trying to do here, that this is supposed to tie into the idea of the Wisps and them using their powers and like... Because the final boss has this thing where at the end of it for the final hit, all of the Wisps come together and you use all their powers for one big final attack. There's actually no supersonic finale here, which I actually like. Instead, we focus on what this game's premise is about with the Wisps and everything, which is nice. But it's totally unearned here, and it's really unfortunate, because the music in the final boss is really going for it. Like, at first it's all, like, evil and Eggman-y sounding, but then over the course of the fight it gets more Sonic-y and it starts playing the main theme, but all orchestral and epic. And then you get the big final hit, and it's all big and epic and impactful, but it totally falls flat because the story has not built up to this and earned this moment adequately. And that's because, up to this point, we haven't had, like, real theming of these kinds of things going on. Instead, the characters have just been making stupid jokes this entire time and not taking anything seriously. If we were building up this theme of, you know, people working together to try to accomplish something that they can't on their own, this could work, and there could be something here, and the very ending of the game tries the same thing, and it doesn't work, where, like, a big explosion of evil Dark Wisp energy or something starts going, and Sonic has to outrun it, but he actually fails to do that and gets engulfed in it. But then the Wisps manage to save him, and they combine all their power together to stop the evil Wisp energy explosion, whatever's going on there, and they bring Sonic back to Earth, and, like... Yeah, you're trying to do that thing of, like, Sonic was like, No, nah, Tails, I'll do it by myself. And then Sonic can't do it by himself, and the Wisps help him out. You know, you can't do everything by yourself. You gotta rely on others. I see what they're trying to do here, but it is just showing up now in this last minute of the story, and it is so poorly done. Oh my goodness.
And then you get the ending where Yakker comes and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot this character existed. And he's like, thank you, Sonic, for saving us. And we're going to go back to our home planet and goodbye. The end. And it's like, wow, you really tried there at the ending to kind of have a story and it did not work at all. This is kind of the issue with having the creative side of Sonic still being the Japanese members and Sonic team, but then having the story written by Americans who have no interest in, like, the heartfelt themed storytelling that we see in Sonic games, and they're just trying to make a Saturday morning cartoon. And those two visions just are butting heads with each other so hard, and it just does not work whatsoever. The plotting here in Sonic Colors is so terrible, and even though this game has dramatically less storytelling than any other Sonic game, it still has like an hour of cutscenes, which is a real issue because there's only like five minutes of actual story here, and the rest of it is just terrible shitty jokes the entire time. And it's a real shame in my opinion, because I think there is some potential here with the themes of what Sonic Colors is trying to do. You know, the environmental stuff, that theme of people coming together, there is potential for a good Sonic story there. And I like the space amusement park, I like all the details and all the environmental things. This could work, it just needs an actual story to accompany it and highlight these important aspects of what they want it to be. But no, we don't get any of that, and so instead what we get is terrible. There is potential in Sonic Colors for a really good Sonic story, and honestly, I think the best way to get it is to play this game like an original Sonic game. That's what the game's trying to be after all anyway. So my recommendation legitimately to enjoy the story of Sonic Colors as much as possible is to skip all the cutscenes and purely get the story through the environmental storytelling details that is legitimately better than actually watching the cutscenes English or Japanese. And that's perhaps the most damning criticism I could ever give to any story. If you just pretend there's no story there, then the story is significantly better. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Uh, I do want to briefly mention here Rise of the Wisps, the animated short made for the release of Sonic Colors Ultimate. Because I actually like this story quite a bit. A lot of people gave it a lot of criticism when it was first coming out for a lot of the same stuff that we see a lot of Sonic stuff get criticized for these days. The characterization, the inappropriate stupid jokes that the characters make, and yeah, that is a problem, that's still there for sure. But it's nowhere near as bad as the main game, or honestly a lot of more recent Sonic stuff in my opinion. And what's important is that it gets the heart right. This little 10 minute short here gets across the main theme of Sonic Colors so much better than the actual game itself does. It's still far from perfect, absolutely, but I legitimately think this is the best official Sonic story told since Black Knight. I actually find it to be quite enjoyable and quite true to Sonic, minus, you know, the small dialogue writing things. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much into detail with it, because it's not that long. I just say give it a watch for yourself if you haven't. I think it's not bad. Uh, I guess I should also briefly talk about the story of Sonic Colors on DS. As I said before, it's basically the exact same story, but the character writing is much more in line with what you would want and expect from Sonic, which I definitely appreciate, but ultimately the story is still told with these really weak visual novel sequences that are not at all engaging, so it's still not a particularly great story or a great way to get the story of Sonic Colors. Uh, but two minor details that are worth mentioning is the addition of the Mother Wisp in Sonic Colors on DS. There's an extra final boss fight here as Super Sonic. Story-wise, this doesn't really add much of anything to the game. It's just after everything is said and done, there's one final thing. The Mother Wisp has been corrupted into the Nega Mother Wisp, and Sonic, you know, turns her back to normal. And then it's, thank you for saving the day, Sonic, whatever. Uh, eh, don't really care about that either way. And then the other thing with Colors DS is when you're doing the side missions, you run into Sonic's Friends TM. Uh, these characters are completely absent from the console version, but in the DS version, they hang around and basically do nothing. 
And I am not a fan of their inclusion because of this. I actually prefer the Wii version where they just don't exist because this is the beginning of the Sonic cast standing around while Sonic does everything, which is a problem we're gonna see in many future Sonic games, and I'm not a fan of it. So, uh, the DS version of Sonic Colors is still not a great way to get a decent Sonic story, in my opinion. This whole Sonic Colors thing is just wasted, sadly. And that's it for the story of Sonic Colors. I'm sorry this video wasn't 10 minutes long, but that's just not how I roll. I have far too much to say about things that don't actually matter about this series of children's video games. And that's because I like Sonic not just as a fan, but as a creative as well. I see all the amazing potential in Sonic, and I want it to be capitalized on. Like I said throughout this video, I think there's a lot of potential here in the story of Sonic Colors. In fact, maybe I could possibly realize some of that potential. But uh, that's a story for another video, I think. Until then, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.